Um, so we are talking about podcasting today. Um, I'm Dina Riley, uh, Department of Special Education. I have with me my colleague, Kevin Curry-Knight. Um, and the reason he's with me is because without him, I would not have been able to do the podcast that we did. So Kevin, I'll have you introduce yourself and then we'll introduce um, the podcast and how to podcast. I think you actually introduced me just fine. Um, Kevin Curry Knight, College of Education at East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina. I guess we should just mention that Gene and I met because I contacted you with a question. Um, I think it was about like so, something in the area of homeschooling. Uh, and I kind of had a question for you and you responded and it, it, that led to a correspondence. And then this was the first project that we really worked on together. Yeah, and I was so excited um, to work on it with him. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about podcast creation for research and classes. Um, and I think that that part is important, right? Because you can do podcasts for so many things. Um, Kevin and I did it because we had a very, very unique interest in terms of self-directed learning environments and alternative education. But you could also podcast for your classes. And we really want to show you how easy and accessible that can be. Um, so our podcast is called Learning by Living. Um, it is a podcast we did, I think we started in maybe 2018, I'm not sure. Um, and we Sounds have, right. Right, right. And we've slowed down a bit. We sort of thought our final episode would be in 2020. Um, and so this was sort of a two-year project. Um, what we wanted to do is we really wanted to gain stories about individuals who were learning in alternative learning environments or individuals who were teaching in those environments. We just wanted to have conversations with people who were doing unique things within the alternative learning space. So we're, I was so excited. I knew that I could probably get guests, um, that we could do the podcast together. And then Kevin is like an audio whiz. And so he would do all the editing for the podcast and everything else. Um, it was just a really nice pairing. And I think we learned a lot from each other. So I think like just generally, we took our strengths and we made them work. So Kevin was the audio and music creation editing wizard, right? He's like, oh, we have to have intro music. And I'm just like, I thought we were just going to talk. Um, but Kevin's like, no, we're going to have intro music. And so he, he really did a lot of the audio. Um, I would recruit guests along with Kevin. We would frame conversations. Um, and then we tried to podcast at least every three weeks. And then we would take turns recording introductions and things like that. And that really means, I should just point out, that means that we had a three-week release schedule, I guess. We didn't want to go three weeks without releasing an episode. That doesn't mean we would record every three weeks. It means like sometimes we would record, I think we did like our busiest week was like two or three interviews in one week. And then we would just space out the releases every three weeks so that it was a consistent release. Yeah, and I have to say, I mean, it really wasn't, I loved the conversations. Um, there was work, but it wasn't heavy work and it felt like fun work. Um, and so I think that's also something that really jointly brought us together. Um, so Kevin, if you want to go over the reasons for podcasting, go for it. Yeah, I just figured I would divide it between altruistic reasons, selfish reasons, and those that were kind of in between. So the altruistic reasons are if you want to get information and resources out there in the open web, it's a good way to do it. Um, I know that I'm probably like a lot of you, I've benefited from free resources all over the web. And I feel like um, as an academic, I'm in a position where I could also offer some resources. So one of the ways to do that is create a podcast and then release it publicly so that it's on different platforms. Also, you diversify your materials for students. We talked before the uh, presentation about kind of the importance of not just giving students, let's say, things to read. Um, it's often good to get them things to see and things to hear, um, stuff like that. So there's a good way to do that. Um, a kind of a reason that's kind of midway between selfish and altruistic is instead of telling, let's say, a colleague of mine about here's how some people who do self-directed learning learned how to read, I can now give them a podcast episode where we went over that with 
Alice Goldstein Plesser or someone else who actually learned to read that way. Um, so instead of telling people about things that you think is in, are interesting, you can do a podcast about it and then say, here, you might listen to this. And then of course, there are the, let's be honest, selfish reasons. Uh, first, you can unleash your inner, inner interviewer or creator or producer. Like if you are a creative type, you like creating things beyond, let's say journal articles, et cetera. This is a really great way to do it. It's a great excuse to talk to interesting people. Last weekend, in fact, this picture is a podcast I did with a political philosopher who's a favorite of mine named Chandran Kukathas. And I don't think he would have, if I would have sent him an email and said, hey, I want to talk to you about your new book on immigration and freedom. I think he would have been like, who's this guy? But I could be like, hey, Chandran, would you like to be on a podcast to talk about your new book? He's probably more likely to respond. So uh, you can talk to a lot of interesting folks that way who might not generally talk to you otherwise because they're busy. Uh, and of course, you can say you have a podcast, which is ultra cool and makes you sound really sophisticated. I love it. Um, but it did. It, it cr created a space for both of us to have really interesting conversations and access to people that we wouldn't normally have had access to. So that was really fun. Um, in terms of audio and preparation and equipment, I you all know that I am such a minimalist when it comes to technology. And if I can't do it in a minimal way, I'm like, yeah, not really interested. I tried so hard to talk you out of that. I know, but I was yeah. like, I don't want like extra stuff, right? I just want to be able to do it. Um, and so in terms of like Kevin talked me into having a mic and headphones, which I acquiesced. Um, but really it was it was Zoom for a while. Um, Kevin dealt with the editing and he'll talk about editing. Um, I did the social media um, and then we kind of looked at different podcast hosting services and decided on Spreaker. There's so many different podcast hosting services. Um, and so Kevin, if you want to talk about Spreaker and then I'll talk about how we uh, edited. Um, I'm going to wait until the next slide because I think uh, it, that'd be a better opportunity to talk about it. Cool. But all I'm saying is if you are interested in podcasting, right, like I think a mic and headphone is really helpful, but you can indeed like record things on Zoom. You don't need anything fancy. Um, and there's a lot of sort of podcast hosting services. So as Kevin will say, you can do this as simple and easy or as like techy and complicated as you would like. And that's really the cool thing about podcasting and you still get a great product. Um, so go for it, episode creation master. Right, so this is like the, I'll go really quickly on this. Uh, if you have questions, we can talk um, after the presentation. So the first is just the production part. So the first thing you do with a podcast, obviously, is you record episodes. It could be as simple as you talking. So there are some podcasts where it's a monologue. So if you have interesting thoughts or you have something you want to explain and you just want to kind of talk your way through it, you can do that. Of course, you could do it with a guest, like Gina said, like through Zoom or something like that. So that's the production side. And this is actually a picture of my setup with, with the mic and everything um, in a sound relatively soundproof room at East Carolina University. Second is the post-production. Once you get done the actual recording, you'll have a file. And your job then is to go and work with that file. And this can be as simple or as difficult as you want. Simple editing would be just snipping the beginning before your intro and snipping the end. And then you have a file ready and that could be your podcast. Or you could be more sophisticated with it. You could do things like compression, EQ, add music, stuff like that. The third step, once you have that new file that's edited, is the distribution process. This is uploading to a hosting platform. And this is where I'll explain kind of what a hosting platform is, because a lot of folks are like, well, can't I just take that file and put it like on my website or put it on my course management service? What do you all use, Canvas, Blackboard? Blackboard. Yeah, okay, so so you could do that. If, if your podcast is solely for your own students to listen to and you don't wanna spend any money on like a hosting service, you could just upload the file to like a post on Blackboard and have your students download it and play it. A hosting service does a few things that are kind of unique. If you want to be able to um, have your podcast uploaded on a separate website that has a player on it so that you can just press play and play it from the website, a hosting service is a good thing. If you want to distribute 
your podcast to iTunes or Google Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or whatever that is, um, a hosting service is going to be a way to do that. Gina, can you click on that link real quick just to uh, give people an idea of what that looks like? Hopefully you'll be able to get into it. Uh, if not, it's no, it's no big deal, but. Um, yeah, can you not see that? Oh, uh, no, it must be doing a separate window. That, that's OK. Um, so, so what a hosting service does is if you can see that little picture snapshot that I give you. Um, oh, OK, maybe you can share the other screen. I just want to show people what a hosting service does. OK, so if you could click on that top episode real quick, just um, that on schoolers learning to read. Great. See, it, it gives you a player. Um, Uploading to, to Blackboard or your own website won't do that. So it gives you a little player. If you uh, can click, Gina, on that area that says embed, um, like at the end of the player, it gives you a link that you can actually like plug into another website with that player already included. And the other thing, like I said, that uh, a hosting service does that you can't do without a hosting service is if you want this to go to Google Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera, this basically creates what's called an RSS feed that you can apply to Google Podcasts and iTunes and Stitcher and all that. And, and then whenever you record an episode, it will just automatically go to those platforms. But like I said, that's that's if you want to do that more advanced thing, you don't have to be as, you know, you don't have to do that sort of advanced option. Cool. So that's really kind of in a nutshell, the life cycle, the production, then there's post-production, then there's distribution. And then of course, optional is if you want to apply to those major platforms, you can do that. So I'm ready for the next slide if, cool. So just real quickly, you can make this as simple or as, or as complicated as you want, depending on what your purposes are, depending on what your confidence level is in terms of podcasting. Like the most basic way to do a recording is get in a room with somebody, take out your cell phone, as long as you have like an audio recording app on it and just press record and do it. You could also do that with Zoom and just record the meeting or whatever you use, Microsoft Teams or anything else that you want to use. Um, or there's more complicated kind of apps that have quote unquote studio quality audio like Zencaster that are just a little bit more finicky. Um, but you could, again, if you want to make it a little bit more professional, you could do it that way. Editing is the same thing. The basic edits are just like, I'm going to snip the beginning of the file. I'm going to snip the end of the file so that I have an intro exit and just that's all I'm going to do. Or you can do the stuff that, that we did, which is like put intro music in, um, EQ everything, compress everything so that the audio is stable. Um, so that's, again, as easy or so, as, as dif difficult as you want it. And then distribution. Again, if, if you want a podcast that's purely for your students' benefit, um, you can just take that file upload it into a post on Blackboard as an attachment and say, hey, everyone, I have a podcast interview with a particular guest that I want you to hear. You can download this file and listen to it. Again, if you want to make it a little bit more, um, increase your distribution, you'll just want to get a uh, podcast hosting service. They vary in price, but you will have to pay at least something per month for that. Um, and then if you really get really advanced, you not only do the hosting service, but through the hosting service, you apply your podcast to iTunes or Google Podcasts or Spotify, et cetera. But again, don't make all the complicated stuff that you could do an obstacle for you to start a podcast because it really is as simple as just record something, take the file, put it somewhere. Yeah, and I would do this all the time and I still do this all the time for my students when it comes to like recording voice notes, right? Recording it, uploading it, and then my students can hear it. So if you're just like, touching like I want to do this and I don't know how record a like a voice note that's long right and upload it to your students and that's really how you get started um, and that gives you the bug and then you could do more and fancier stuff and you can always start with that kind of lo-fi way to do it and then as you grow in confidence you can be like I want to take these files and and get a edit them so then you can learn how to do that and then I want to take these files and put them on a hosting service you can always do that after the fact you don't always have to do all of this from square one yeah 
And I did something like that. I did the voice notes and then I went to like Anchor FM, right? And Anchor FM is a really easy way to podcast. It's really easy to upload for your classes. Um, and so again, there's ways to do this in steps so that you learn about podcasting and then you're ready to create like this really fun, awesome podcast. Um, so in terms of advantages and disadvantages, it was so fun to work together. I think it was like, yeah. it was so fun. We're a good team and we love working together. Yeah. Um, I was writing a book at the time time and I loved about the topic. So I loved hearing people's interesting stories about self-directed learning and actually it became material for the book I was writing. Mm -hmm. um, there is, yeah, it was really, I mean, that's how you get the research aspect of this, right? Um, there was lots of time involved. We would spend probably, I would say like two to three hours a week on it. Um, Kevin would spend more time in terms of editing and things like that. But again, it was fun work. It was like my Friday morning project and it was super, super fun. Yeah. Um, also, I think, and we don't feel guilty about this at all, eventually a podcast runs its course, right? So you might find something super interesting for a specific period of time. Starting a podcast does not mean you have to like start it and have it forever and ever, right? Okay. Kevin and I eventually saw themes and themes and themes coming out of our, our interviewees. And we were like, okay, like we've heard this story. We know the story. Um, and so the podcast ran its course. And so it's nice to know something doesn't have to be a lifetime endeavor. It can be a semester long endeavor or a year long endeavor um, and just have fun with it. So I always think that that's important to say. In terms of future plans, um, we do plan to use this podcast for something else. So we wanna take the stories of self-directed learning that we've created um, and collected, we're gonna code them and we're gonna create an academic article with them because we did see in every interview, we saw themes coming out of these interviews, right? The importance of freedom in education, the importance of you know relationship in education, the importance of alternative learning environments, um, and so, you know, there's different ways you can do this. You could add podcasts to your learning management system. You can create podcasts which, with your students, which I've done on Anchor FM, which is super fun. Or you can do what we do, you know, create the podcast and then use the content for the podcast for research or for book material or whatever you need. Tina, can you, can you illustrate what do you mean with create podcasts with your students? What does that look like? Yeah, so sometimes like on Anchor FM, I had a student and I do um, sort of an Anchor FM podcast and we did it like on Zoom, right? So we were like on Zoom doing Anchor FM and just mm. talking together. Um, so we created one about like UDL and it was just sort of a fun assignment and we did it as a model and then others modeled. Um, so you can do that. There's a lot of things you can do with that audio work, with that podcast work that you can then apply to your classroom and your research. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this share so we can ask questions. Um, 